I'll give the lady a fine surgeon. The medical profession needs it. Oh, I thought Dr. Gregory Lane to your ego and I. But if you want to tell me, the most promising young surgeon ever came to this hospital? Oh, you'd say he had a fine pair of hands, but his judgments weren't really clear. Oh, there's one sure way to check on his judgment. Oh, of course, see what he says about Grayson. Aren't you always telling me that anyone who agrees with you is a darn good doctor? <laughs> ah, you're getting too smart for me. Go on, then. Good morning, Mr. Grayson. Well, oh. Mr. Grayson, it's as bad as I thought, huh? Mr. Grayson, our advice is an operation. It's a very delicate operation. I understand. I insist on the operation. You see, I'm not afraid of anything except point blind. But if I send you to one of the best brain surgeons, will you tell Dr. Lane I'll talk to him after his exam in this situation? I'm very grateful. Never mind us, Mr. Grayson. We'd be pretty bad doctors if we didn't do everything humanly possible for the final thing. We both know the final power of life and death is still in the hands of the great healer. Yes, Mr. Grayson, that doesn't change. Dr. Grayson was on the phone, sir. Thank you. Well, good luck. Thank you, Doctor. Hello, Cole. Well, how is the head of this gold brain of Paris today? Oh, boy, fine, man. Poor Mr. Sessel. You ought to take a clear out of the institute this afternoon. Dr. Squires will show him a place in the family job. He said he'd be clear about it. No, no, no. But in justice to everybody, I'm going to do my best to make him accept. That's more than generous, Leonard. You lose him, I know it'll be a little bloody. Oh, it'll be a first way. Well, since you're not going to take your own oath, am I right? And I want to talk to you anyway. Let's go and dig our graves a little deeper with our teeth. Miss Parker? Lunch. Grant that, Molly Bird. If I don't drink at least one glass of milk a day, she hides my cigarettes. Yeah. I know it's good for me. But you I hate this stuff. What makes you hesitate about Grayson, Jimmy? Well, I'm not sure. What makes you decide? It's my best part of my That's the one most important thing for a doctor to know. To face situations with nothing to lean on but what he's learned. Yes, even in my short experience, there have been times where I've done cold. Yes, you had to act like the old man. With life in one hand and death in the other. You had to do it and you did. That's what I call being a born doctor. Well, that's a good thing. Huh? Aren't you going to drink milk? Oh, sure, sure. But don't try and change the subject, Andre. Jimmy, you'll make mistakes, but let them be your mistakes. Use your eyes, your heart, your brain, your instincts. Make up your mind, and then go ahead. You think I'm going to learn half what you know? Yeah. You have to begin where I leave off. And you think you're being fair to me? To yourself? To the medical profession? Well, what do you mean? You haven't seen Dr. Lockberg in two months. Why? Because I'm a good doctor, and I know what's the matter with me. Cancer isn't necessarily hopeless. Well, every time I intend to call Lockberg up, something important turns up. Nothing is that important. Look, if I have to finish any part of what you've started, you'll have to stay here and teach me as long as you can. All right, Jimmy. I'll call him this afternoon. Come on. Well, I always hope to be here at five o'clock. You are, you insane. Come on, come on, drink your milk. Oh, Don't think you can hide from me, Dr. James Kildare. Look here, Molly Bird, this is my bedroom, and even the superintendent of nurses hasn't got any right to come barging in. Oh, be quiet. Dr. Kildare, let's log in phones. I took practice until 24 with a new suit of clothes from the hospital emergency department. Oh, yes, I did. But you see this? I see everything. Well, don't you burn. I ordered that suit burned as a public precaution. A public precaution, my foot. But the man had nothing more contagious than a broken arm. I personally examined that suit of clothes and found definite traces of leprosy. Leprosy? Leprosy. Bubonic plague, housemaid's knee, and a slight trace of Scandinavian hookworm. Scandinavian hookworm, you fool. Besides, I know there was a job waiting for if you had good suit of clothes. Let me you haven't got the milk. Molly, no matter what else you can say about me, I'm a man of honor. I said I'd drink one glass of milk, and one glass of milk I drank. Give me my cigarettes, please. And how is the bottle still full? <laughs> You'll drink this glass of milk or no cigarettes today. Now give me my cigarettes. We're still in your pocket. I forgot to take them out this morning. Holy oh, I've been trying for 25 years to force somebody to take care of themselves. It's a little hard to break the habit. Well, if you've been along without me for a while, supposing I run up to have a doctor, Dr. Lane. Yeah, Grayson's in pretty bad shape. Let me know when Wayne wants to talk to him. That's what I meant to do. Then later in the afternoon, we're going for a drive in the country. Well, how are you thinking of accessing me, sir? You're doing a world of good. Oh, maybe. I've ordered a nice big car, so the three of us will be comfortable. Three of us? Uh-huh. You and me and Nurse Mary Lamont. Yeah, well, why not Mary Lamont? She isn't engaged to Dr. Lane, even since we did go out with him last week. What are you expecting to do? Die an old maid because you only get $20 a month? I don't expect her to do anything of the sort. Well, Dr. Gillespie, I guess it's pretty obvious to you how I feel about Mary Lamont, but I can't and I won't say anything to her about it. After all, $20 a month is $20 a month. We're ready, Dr. Lane. Good, let's prove it. I want to see you after this operation. Dr. Lane, a package arrived for me this morning. It contained a dozen pair of beautiful silk stockings. Silk stockings? Silk stockings. I've sent them back except for three things. I don't know who they came from. I guess who you sent them. <laughs> Besides, they're also pretty. I don't know what they But I've been dating since I've been with you tonight. All right, Greg. <laughs> we'll celebrate a successful operation. I need a successful operation. Oh, it's only the fools who are talking. Anyone knows mortality and brain surgery is high. Yeah, but you can't explain that to a dead patient. Dr. Gillespie still believes in it. You're operating on you, patient, aren't you? I still believe in myself. But this time I've got to. We've got an operation to come on, Mr. Lamont. How are you feeling, Mr. Grayson? Sleeping. I'm sure you shut me off. I'm going to do my best to fix you up as good as you. Watch it. 
I tell you, what my mother said to me when I left for New York. Terrible thing, this one. Oh, she said you won't never get anywhere trying to be anybody but Jimmy Kildare. Jimmy Kildare is all right with me. So in the past hour, I've been trying to be someone else. Why, Jimmy? Because if I were someone else, maybe I'd have brains enough to say this in a different way. Say, John, I'm not going to take the job at the Messenger Institute. Nothing but a can of five dollar bills. 